We will now discuss the simplest model that is uh, worth considering in uh, nonlinear spectroscopy or indeed any uh, type of spectroscopy, the two-level system. What do I mean by two-level system? I envision a state, a uh, ground state of some system and an excited state of some system. That is, let's say this be some small molecule like benzene or, or chlorophyll or something like that. This would have its electronic ground state and let's say some first excited state, something that I can reach uh, by uh, optical excitation energy. So this uh, omega here is a visible light. Now this uh, would appear in some uh, spectroscopic measurement, absorption and so on at as a peak at uh, this frequency this let's this be omega zero so at omega zero there should be some peak and that peak however is not uh, not uh, well is not it, it has certain width so this thing has certain width it's not a perfect resonance as we would expect uh, for a system that uh, that is not coupled to anything else in fact if this is in some uh, solution and so when there, there are many things uh, bouncing uh, around the system and actually causing causing fluctuations fluctuations of the energy gap here so we want to find a description which includes not just this two level system these two levels but also everything that is causing the broadening of this uh, uh, of this transition here which is causing uh, the uh, that is which is causing uh, the fluctuation of the energy gap we will also assume that processes of de excitation of this spontaneous processes of de excitation are so slow that we don't have to take them into account now uh, what's our Hamiltonian there for, then for this two-level system uh, going to look like well I could write first something like this ground state energy the projection to the uh, ground state then <coughs> excited state energy the projection to the excited state so this would be a system without all these things around well if I want to take them into account they have to be described by some Hamiltonian but let me do this I will not write just a single Hamiltonian but I will say well these guys might have a different Hamiltonian when my system is in the ground state and a different Hamiltonian in when my system is in the excited state why I want that let's imagine what would happen if uh, HG would be equal to HE and they would uh, equal to some well, let's call it HB because this is gonna be the bath so if that would be true then I could write H the total H as G E uh, epsilon G G plus epsilon E E so purely electronic system fine and what would I write here I would write H B and after that I would have this and this G G plus E E but what is this here this is in fact because I have only two states of my of my molecule in my model I, I would uh, I would uh, assume this this basically represents the completeness uh, relation so if I have a basis of such states and I sum over all of them it's one this is unity operator on the electronic uh, on the electronic uh, system so well the Hamiltonian is actually a sum of a molecular or system Hamiltonian and the bath Hamiltonian and is there any interaction there is no interaction here no interaction no interaction basically when there is no interaction there cannot also be any fluctuations uh, caused by that interaction simply if these things would be written in in this simple way that they would just sit next to each other and not know about anything about them about each other there would be no interaction for the interaction to happen I need to have a difference between these two Hamiltonians one can also ask well so why shouldn't there be a term uh, which would look which would look like this which would be some GH uh, G E and the corresponding Hermit conjugation term why not well 
the answer is simple. We assumed that these relaxation processes here down would be very slow and we said we will neglect terms uh, that uh, that would do that and this is precisely such terms so this we said we neglect and the uh, the fact that we neglect that is not so bad because we know from our molecule that it excites on a time scale that is completely different from what we want to discuss uh, uh, in spectroscopy let's say uh, I can say in advance that this will decay much slower than uh, the corresponding dephases, dephasing process that is responsible for the width of this, uh, of this transition. All right. So the Hamiltonian therefore cannot look uh, this way. It cannot have both of these guys the same. They have to be different. So the Hamiltonian therefore uh, cannot be straightforwardly written as a sum of these uh, of these two operators, but it's not a bad idea actually. If you assume that this uh, part of the Hamiltonian uh, corresponds to uh, to the system in equilibrium, it's in the ground state, vibronic uh, or electronic ground state. To why not to write the system? Not why not to write that Hamiltonian in a in that way, that is uh, Bath Hamiltonian like here, and the system Hamiltonian. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's write then this thing again. Well, then we can write H G G plus E E. And here we have to have, well, we had only H uh, G H E E. So in order to compensate for that we would have to write we would have to write this. Now you can <coughs> easily see that uh, this gives us back the old Hamiltonian as we uh, as, as we assumed it here. Because because what? Because this term here cancels with this term here. And then we would have H G G H E E. So we split the system artificially into something that looks like the H S plus H B plus H interaction. And H interaction uh, is the difference between the excited state and ground state Hamiltonian. And this all is actually assigned a projection to the excited uh, to the excited state. Let's have some more detail about the two Hamiltonians, these two here. So uh, let's assume that this is a bath composed out of uh, many vibrational modes, something like normal modes of that surrounding of my molecule. So I'll sum over all modes, K, okay, and I would have their kinetic energy pk squared divided by 2mk and I will have their uh, their um, their potential energy so mk omega square k divided by 2 it would be qk here so this is the this is this part of the Hamiltonian and as we said the excited state thing has to look differently uh, although they are the same mode so the only thing that can be really different would be the uh, the, the potential potential energy surface so we can write something like this the frequency we would assume be the same but we might assume and that's the usual assumption that there is a there is a shift of the uh, potential energy surface out of the uh, out of the original uh, minimum so the model would look basically like this in the ground state you have certain equilibrium so we would call this zero and then in the excited state you have your system slightly shifted by some by some d and that's this and this you do for all uh, all cases for all uh, uh, or all different modes now the q k minus d k square can be written in this way it can be basically always 
written as the QK square and the rest and using this we can ar arrive at some sort of a better form of the or basically we can uh, we can arrive at the form of the um, of the uh, of the interaction operator so here we should have e I'm sorry for that now the H int interaction operator, which is the difference between of these two, is completely void of the uh, of the uh, kinetic energy. There is no kinetic energy in the interaction term. This is there is, however, still potential energy part. There is this minus two q k d k. That's that's actually this part, and then there is still plus d. Uh, omega k square divided by 2 dk dk square all right so uh, we see now that the interaction the way that we uh, assumed it here is actually linear linear in the bath coordinate so it's a linear linear interaction uh, the, its strength is given by d and then there is this constant term that we have to handle somehow so constant constant term. This we will do in the uh, next video.